any of you guys out there online, if you guys ask a question, I'm going to throw this to you. All right? This is so the people online can hear the question. As an example, Adam, can you catch? Bam. Yes, sir. Awesome. Look at that. Oh, look at this. What did I do with this? You're talking to it. Oh, hello. See? <laughs> Love it. So this is for you guys. Oop, as I drop it. All right, so we can go ahead and throw it around so you guys can get some questions answered. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and get the main event started, guys. We're going to kind of keep things a little different than normal. A lot of times we bring up a bunch of different presentations, PowerPoints, and I think uh, that gets boring after a while. Would you guys agree? So we're going to try to keep this to a little bit more of an open format. And I want to start off by introducing, and I kind of already alluded to, and uh, it's kind of weird that I called you earlier today. But uh, Adam, you want to come up here just for a minute? I'm going to pass this mic off to you, and I'm going to talk into this thing. But So Quest, since we do deal so much in self-directed IRAs, we have to deal with unique things like uh, UBIT, UDFI. We have to deal with a lot of different unique tax, quest uh, tax questions, and every single time, we always go to the same person, and that's you. So tell me a little bit real quick just about yourself, Adam, and why we always go to you and how you can help people out there, especially since it's tax season. Hi, everybody. I'm Adam Barr. I'm a CPA here, a partner at a local firm. MGA LLP. You actually made partner a year or two ago? Yeah, a year and a half. Been a partner year and for a year and a half. <laughs> uh, I keep coming back here because Derek keeps sweet talking me, calling me the smartest CPA he knows and stuff like that. But uh, I, I do work with a lot of Quest clients on some of those things that he mentioned, such as UBTI, unrelated business taxable income. I got some questions while we were out there with the food on that topic. Uh, I also work with a lot of small and medium-sized business owners, both in the Houston area and around the country, uh, on helping them with their business tax compliance, business tax planning, also some business consulting. One of my favorite areas to work in is real estate, particularly in multifamily and other syndicated real estate investments. So if you are kind of into that kind of business, I'd love to talk to you. Uh, the other thing, we so the, the only thing that we really have trouble giving a lot of help with is if you just got like a personal tax return that's not really what we're set up to do but if you've got a business or you're a real estate investor or a real estate uh syndicator we're really happy to help with that so with that being said one of the un most unique things is last year i called adam and i called his team I was like hey look i don't care if you cost a little bit extra right i want to make sure i have someone doing it right and he says hey look we can absolutely do your taxes but he was letting me know and i really appreciated this that you're like hey you can find this person, this person, this person will be able to do it cheaper than us. And I thought that was actually very noble because how many times have you worked with someone and they're like, hey, you know what? Yep, we'll do it for you. And they won't even let you know about those type of things. So not only is he here for good education and you'll see him, we're going to bring him in here on what we're calling our master of tax avoidance class. But I'm going to just say that you guys must have a very honest firm. So thank you for that. Yeah, uh, we we live the principle of honesty first, and it shows in everything we do. So thanks for recognizing that. Yeah. yeah. Everyone give a big round of applause. <laughs> so coming up next is actually our main sponsor of the night. If you guys had any drinks, if you guys had any food or anything like that, it's all thanks to Paul Limnados over here from Blink Lending. Paul, come on up. <laughs> Paul, tell us a little bit about you before I embarrass you. Look at him. He looks all handsome over there. How do I nice follow that perfect up? Perfect suit. And... Keep going. Uh, so for those that don't know, uh, my name is Paul Amnados. I'm with uh, Blink Lending and Investments. We're a local independently owned mortgage company. We primarily work with real estate investors, although we work with homeowners as well. So if you're buying a home to live in or you want to refinance that, pull out some cash, we can do all the loans the banks and credit unions do difference from us and them is nine times out of 10. Our rates are going to be lower. Our costs are going to be lower and our process is going to be much faster because our rates are wholesale. Their rates are retail. Uh, we also do private money lending just without any of the traditional junk fees. Like we don't charge our clients appraisals. We don't charge them interest on their own drawn rehab budget. We don't charge them draw or inspection fees or wires. We don't charge them payoff fees, um, extension costs, uh, and there's a few other, Oscar, I won't put you on this spot, but I'm forgetting them. The point is, is what you pay at closing is what you pay and afterwards just the interest. So that's all the business side of it. Whenever we close a loan, we also sell notes. So if you're someone that has some lazy money sitting in your IRA or you're a note buyer, I would love to talk to you about our process. Outside of that, it's rodeo season and I'm on the steer auction committee. 
Does anybody, do you have an idea of how much money the Houston Rodeo has raised for Texas youth education? Like, it is, it is amazing. Um, I've lived in Houston for 32 years, and up until last year, I had no idea that it's the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. Like, they're, if, if you haven't gone out there to see what the kids do, um, I highly recommend you go out to one of the auctions, whether it's the poultry auction, the swine auction, the steer auction. It's tons of fun. And all this is Texas kids, Texas youth, Texas education. So if you haven't made it out to get out there, the number is $550 million, just absolutely incredible. And if you want to get an awesome meat package <laughs> that is tax deductible, talk to me. <laughs> that is something I didn't know about you, but Paul, don't put that away. Crab, pick that back up. <clears throat> so, guys, I am a real real estate investor. I do represent Quest, right? I am what they call a retirement expert. I've been able to speak in front of Congress now on five different occasions, which is really unique. It's a brand new kind of thing I've dealt with. But for every single one of my real estate transactions that I either needed funded or every single note that I've purchased, I've purchased through you, Paul. So with that being said, do you guys know why I purchased those notes? Huh? Passive income. Absolutely passive income. We're going to be talking a lot about that. I love that. But I can buy notes from a lot of different individuals. It's the way you vet your deals. So tell me a little bit more about how you guys vet and how you guys go through the motion of honestly making sure the borrower is the right person. Uh, so, so Troy and I were chatting earlier, um, and he nailed it on the head. You know, we, we've got $30 million in loan servicing, which is a number to be very, very proud of. It's it's nowhere near what these you know New York or New Jersey guys will have. Uh, so when it comes to us making our underwriting decisions, well, if one deal goes bad, well, that's that's a big number um, compared to one deal on a bigger number. So when it comes to lending money, the thing that I put most stock into is the person I'm lending money to. I'm 95% guarantor borrower, the person that's signing the promissory note that says I promise to pay you back and probably 5% collateral. So things I'm looking for are credit, and I'm looking for assets. So 80 plus percent of our clients have 700 plus credit scores, and 80 plus percent of our clients have six figures liquid assets. Um, and that's been a big reason as to why our foreclosure and default rate is as low as it's been. We've closed well over 500 loans, and we have year uh, to date period in our existence, five foreclosures. So that's less than 1%. We're leaving some opportunity out there. I get it. Um, at the same time, I'm from the school of it's all borrower, it's all borrower, it's all borrower. Bam. Thanks, Paul. Sorry to put you on the spot. I told you I was going to embarrass you a little bit. All right, let's see the inside of your suit. Um, it's not one with the kids this time, actually. Uh, <laughs> this guy wears custom suits. Doesn't he look handsome? Look at this guy. Everyone give him a big round of applause. <laughs> All right, with that being said, before I bring up our next speaker, guys, if you're here in the classroom or if you're online, I want you guys to uh, check out what we're calling our Master of a Tax Avoidance class. We try to make as many of our classes completely free to all of you. We really, really do. This is one of those classes we do have to actually charge you some money for. If you'd like to get a ticket while you're here or you're attending this event, we can give you a 30% off. But if you are a client, we'll give you a different coupon that is only for clients out there that we can give you a bigger discount than that. That being said, this is not only about tax avoidance, but it's a lot about you leaving money on the table and not understanding where to invest. And even though a lot of us out there have been investing and most of us out there, you're probably like myself, a labeled as a real estate investor. When I say real estate, the first thing that used to pop to mind was fix and flips or rentals, right? Throughout the years, I've learned there's so much more than that from wholesales and options, I hate both those. You can get complicated to do things like sub twos. But lately, we've been seeing a lot of people raising capital for things that, you know, uh, Adam Barr mentioned earlier, like syndications, multifamily, storage units. But there's a problem. Everyone's doing it. Everybody. You're smiling, but you know I'm right. You're right. Everybody out there has been raising capital. So if I'm going to park capital with somebody, I need to be able to do the right due diligence. I need to make sure that I'm investing with someone that not only I can trust, but has a good proven background. So we started looking for things that are still labeled as real estate, but maybe out of the box a little bit. And believe it or not, we end up finding this oil and gas slash mineral right area. And that's why we really wanted to bring in our guest speaker for today, Mr. Troy Eckerd from Eckerd Enterprises. Everyone give Troy a big round of applause.
But I'm going to stand off to the side. I'm going to let you do your thing, and then I'll be up here and just – you and I will banner back and forth, I'm sure. He's not going to last long on the side, I can assure you that. Can you guys hear me in the speaker okay? Yeah. Good. Um, first off, how many of you have actually invested directly in oil and gas, either inside your self-directed IRA or outside of your self-directed IRA? Can I see a show of hands? Okay. Were you happy with it or not so happy? Okay. Well, we got one doing this, one going this, right? That's better than this, right? So I'm going to give you just a little concept, and that is <clears throat> oil and gas in this country has less supply than we have demand. And if you noticed in the last four years, we've talked about ESG, we've talked about uh, all kinds of alternative energy. The truth is, since pre-COVID, we actually have a higher consumption rate than we did before COVID. So the truth is, if you go back to economics 101, it's really simple. We have less supply than we have demand, and there's no solution in sight. So that's an industry I like to be in. I've been involved in oil and gas since 1985. Uh, we're one of the number one largest buyers of oil and gas mineral rights in the state of Oklahoma. I own uh, interest in a pipeline in the Gulf of Mexico, the second largest pipeline in the Gulf of Mexico. Our company's downtown Houston. I've been doing this since I was 20 years old. So I've seen massive cycles in energy. The real reason most wealthy investors or most prudent investors do not invest in oil and gas is because it's an absolute foreign language. It has too many moving parts. And so when you think about investing in something, usually you want it pretty simple, like a note or a multifamily or a house. I can go see it, touch it, kick it, or feel it. So I brought a few props for you, okay? So this is uh, frac sand, fracking a well. And these two are samples of oil taken from oil wells I drilled about 30 years ago. And you can see some of it looks like gasoline, some of it looks a little bit darker like crude oil, but it's Texas tea. And what I can tell you is, is that this country is loaded with oil and gas. We probably have as much as Saudi Arabia, but we just didn't know how to get it out. So due to a bunch of really smart engineers about 14 years ago, they figured out how to drill horizontal wells. And they figured out how to frack them and stimulate it by pumping in a bunch of beach sand, right? And what they figured out is that in this country, we have about 30 buried Grand Canyons that were put there 50 to 100 million years ago. So in my equivalent with energy, what's happened is the risk has come down probably 90 plus percent for private investors. But there's still risk. When you think about a self-directed IRA, you got to think about a magic cat. Well, why a magic cat? Well, this is Quest, okay? <laughs> Quest is the custodian that holds your assets. And part of being a self-directed IRA is you drive the car. You pick those assets. You decide you want to do notes hard money loans, you decide real estate, multifamily, you put in the basket what you think's fit. So the problem is, if you get yourself some eggs, which each egg represents an investment, it's your fault you put a rotten egg in it, it's not Quest's fault. Quest is the custodian. So you must be careful with your due diligence. And Derek and the entire team here at Quest says it over and over again. We're a custodian, we're not gonna recommend investments. We're going to invite companies like Eckerd to come and talk about things you may not have any knowledge about, oil and gas and mineral rights and energy investments, and the next person can talk about self-storage. But I have news for you. I travel all over the country. I have over 1,000 accredited clients as investors directly with our company. Last year, we did $250 million in acquisitions of mineral rights. We're cash flowing 18.8% cash on cash across every portfolio. It's probably going to be over 20% this year. Our company will send out between 50 and $75 million in cash out to our clients, both in self-directed IRAs and outside of uh, self-directed IRAs. And that's not, I'm saying bragging, because a lot of people like to tell, how many of you like to look at car dealerships? And they say, number one Ford dealership on this block. <laughs> and then you go to the next dealership, number one Ford dealership on this half block. And I've never bought a Ford from anybody that's number two in Ford yet. I've not done that, okay? So when you look at online, Derek's right, everybody's pitching multifamily and high notes. Have you noticed on all the ads lately that they've gone from 8% preferred to 10% preferred to 12% preferred? How many of you were old enough to remember the savings and loan failures back in the 70s? Okay. What happened there? They were out of balance. They couldn't raise money. So they started saying, if you'll put your money on my, on my savings and loan, I'll pay you 12%. Well, you got a couple million dollars. Well, we need a lot more because our, all of our loans are defaulting. So now we're off for 13, 14, 15, 17%. With that rate comes risk. And I just told you we're making 18.8%. So you're thinking, well, Troy's out of business. He, there's no way he can generate that return. He must be offering that kind of return because his investments are high risk. And that's not the answer. The answer is, how many of you believe that Warren Buffett is a smart investor? 
every hand in the room should go up. He's the smartest stock investor of all time. Nobody will ever beat what he's done. Warren Buffett quietly, without being taken across and raked across the media coal, says quietly said, I put $20 billion in buying Oxy stock, Occidental Petroleum stock. I'm going to buy $30 billion. I believe it's Chevron or Conoco. I think it's Chevron. He's going to buy $30 billion. Has anybody called him out? Or what are you talking about? You're buying fossil fuels? Are you out of your mind? Nobody said a word. Warren Buffett owns 53 stocks in his portfolio in Berkshire Hathaway as of the last report last June out of 4,200 publicly traded stocks. Okay, Two of them are oil companies. I would think I'd be smart enough to follow the smartest stock buyer in the, in the planet about where he thinks the value of future oil and gas is going to be. Here's my fun part. When you own minerals, I own 100% of the oil and gas minerals under the acre that I own. If I own an acre of land, I might own the surface, I might not, but I own all the natural resources under the ground. Occidental Petroleum comes along and says, Mr. Ecker, we want to lease your land. I go, absolutely, let's cut a deal. We'll pay you so much per acre to lease it, and we're going to give you a royalty retention of ownership. We negotiate. It's somewhere between 12.5% to 25%. Then Oxy comes along with that agreement and says, you have no liability, no expenses, no capital exposure, no environment, nothing, zero. You're like the king and queen of England. You get a royalty income for every drop of oil and gas coming out of the ground forever, from every formation, from every drop, and you never pay a dime. Why is that important? Inside my self-directed IRA, I don't want any losses. I can't take them. In my self-directed IRA, I want it to grow and expand. And I want to defer those taxes until I'm forced to take it out, and I take it out when I'm ready for it. So what our clients have been doing is they've been investing through their self-directed IRAs, buying mineral interest, and they get a check every single month. Every single month, Oxy pays for the oil and gas. So last month, and the very first person that gets a check is the mineral owner because it's not their money. $10 million comes in. They set aside $2 million of the $10 million. That goes into their royalty account. They take the other $8 million, they pay all the bills, drill more wells, pay for all the liability. And you and I as mineral owners, we wait to get our pro rata share of that $2 million every single month. Oil goes to $50 a barrel, we get a little less. Oil goes to $129 like last March when Russia invaded Ukraine, we get $129 a barrel. What makes it so nice is you don't have to second guess where the oil is. It wasn't that way 14 years ago. 14 years ago, somebody would drill a vertical well you try to buy minerals under that well, and if they drilled a dry hole, your minerals were worthless. Who's going to buy a mineral under a dry hole? Now, instead of trying to figure out where the oil and gas is, I'll ask you, could you throw a pencil and hit the carpet under your feet? The answer is yes, because these shell formations are the size of the Grand Canyon, and they're drilling a well down one or two miles, and they're going sideways, horizontally, with the greatest technology you've ever seen. They're actually using triangulation with satellite to guide that drill bit two miles in the ground within 18 inches of accuracy. They're frack stimulating using computers and quadruple panels with nine engineers in a truck guiding and fracking that well. And the wells today are four times better than they were 10 years ago. And they just keep getting better and better, which is why the United States became the number one oil producer. Now, wait a minute. How does that make sense to me, my self-directed IRA? Well, I want safety. I don't want to lose any money. I need income. The more frequent I get it, the higher internal rate of return. Because if you give my money back faster, it compounds. and I can reinvest it. You get cash flow every single month. What's the expenses? Zero. You get 12 checks and a 1099. That's it. Now, you don't get a 1099, obviously, because you're reporting it to your self-directed IRA, but if you do it individually. So what we find ourselves in is a position as a company of going out, buying minerals, inviting partners to participate, and we charge a fee for that. After that, you never pay a dime. You never get an expense, a bill, a management fee. There's no equity sharing. It's the cleanest, most passive investment you can participate in. Wait a minute. I heard oil and gas is bad. They're scams. Lots of guys drill dry holes. It's the most crooked business in the world. Okay, that's true. But I got to tell you something. It happens in hard money lending, and it happens in multifamily. It happens in every investment. What you've got to do is be prudent and run your own due diligence. I started in 1985. I had a registered brokerage firm for 21 years, CRD number 2711. My fingerprints have been on file since 1985. I've never had a single lawsuit from a single client in 37 years. Now, that is not saying that I'm perfect because I've drilled dry holes and I've lost money. What happened is I was able to capitalize on the fact that the industry evolved from vertical drilling with a lot of risk. We now have 1,657 wells under the minerals that we bought in the last three years, zero dry holes. We have probably another two to 3,000 wells that will be drilled on the minerals we already own. We don't pay a dime. So for us, we figured out the right formula. Let's find investors 
who have open mind, who need energy. When do economies do really well? When inflate, when oil's high or low? Anybody? When do economies do really well? Oil's low. You want cheap energy. I don't want to pay FedEx's cost for what happened back in the uh, 2008 era. Airlines started charging for baggage fees because jet airline fuel was double and triple. By the way, they never gave those fees back, right? <laughs> Once you get it, they never return it. And the reality is, is that the reason why the economy did so good four or five years ago and has faltered for the last 18 to 24 months is because energy went from $55 a barrel under President Trump to a price of $129 a barrel last year during the uh, uh, invasion of Ukraine. So what I want to tell you is, and I like visuals, and I'm kind of a jokester, if you don't know me, I like investments I can see, touch, kick, and feel. Oil and gas mineral rights are truly real estate. The IRS treats it that way. You don't get a deduction investing in mineral rights because you don't lose your money. It may go up or down in value, but it's real estate. Most of you like real estate, whether it's be loans, or you like to own the real estate itself, or you like to do syndications. I like the fact that I own 100% of the oil and gas in the ground under every mineral I own, and companies like Occidental Petroleum and Warren Buffett are going to go drill wells on my property for free at $10 million, $10 million a well, and they're going to drill four, five, six wells at a time. And I just wait 180 days, and I start eating my check. The life of these wells they're drilling is 25 to 100 years life expectancy. Okay, My great-great-grandchildren go, I don't know who that old crazy guy Ecker was. We sure do love that guy. We love him. Okay, I hope it's not a bunch of crackheads and lazy people sitting on the couch eating Cheetos either. Okay, The key is to this. Inside of your Quest account, Quest is trying to bring you education. It's not a sales pitch. On what you might put into that self-directed IRA that you choose, that's a winner. That's going to make you money. You're not going to get a bill. You're not going to get expense. You're going to get a simple summary of your income you made the previous year. And I don't care if oil goes to $10 a barrel. They're going to pay me 20% of whatever they get every single month without fail, even above bankruptcy. I don't care if they file bankruptcy. We get our money because it's not their money and it's not time to eating liens. So when I look around inside my magic hat, I'm kind of corny this way, but my wife says I'm a nerd. All right. When you look around at your, at your great magic hat, I want to know what's inside my self-directed IRA, and I want to know that it won. I want mineral rights in mind because I want a golden egg because it's going to pay me the next 25 to 100 years with zero expenses. And I know that it's going to continue to develop because, quite frankly, the U.S. has probably as much oil and gas as Saudi Arabia. And in these basins, we're talking 50 million barrels of oil in place per square mile in Oklahoma where we buy, up to 250 million barrels in place at the southern end of Oklahoma, and I don't have any dry holes. You ready? Yeah. I so, just thought of this on the way over here, by the way. I love crazy stuff. So. I'm going to say that is the dorkiest thing I think I've ever cool. seen you do. <laughs> well, if this job doesn't work, I'm going to become a comedian. I don't know how it's going to work out. Either. <laughs> All right. So I've been told we, you and I have to stay somehow in between here because that's the camera and we got to make sure people online can see us. All right, so, good. Uh, guys, this is for you. I want you to understand this is for you guys to ask questions to us. Now, I'm going to ask you some questions as we go through it. And Nicole, you already have a question. She's telling you to move, oh, this, sorry. move this way. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the first thing is, uh, I do like to talk a little bit about my experience. I was telling a couple of our clients earlier is me as an individual, Derek Long from Quest Trust Company. I have an unfair investment advantage over every single person in here. Can anyone guess what it is? Minus you guys, because I already told you. What is my unfair advantage? You're around these guys all day. I like that. Right, but that's not really it. I get to see every single one of our clients' clients' investments. I get to see the good investments. I get to see the bad investments, right? So what happened is my dad asked me, he says, hey, Derek, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to find some different companies. And he said, I want you to look at some storage units. I want you to look at some multifamily. I want you to look at some oil and gas. I want you to look at minerals. I want you to find a place to park this big check. And that's what he did. And so what we did is we took the next two to three years and we literally just watched as people did investments. And there was only one group, Troy, that was actually very consistent. That was yours. Did you know that? I did not know that. So uh, I just thought that was actually very unique. Now, with that being said, uh, there's a couple of things that you do. And man, I'm going to embarrass you as well. I, I like being embarrassed. Go ahead. Go for it. So uh, <laughs> what happened was is I did my first investment with you back in 2021. Okay. okay, let's see if this works. We're going to try something. Now, in 2021, when I did my very first investment with you, uh, I always joked to people, I said, I didn't invest in oil and gas. I didn't invest in minerals or anything like that. I invested in Troy. Okay, so 
This is my phone. Look, look, there's my wife and our dog. Look, my dog wore a tux to our wedding. Spoiled. But what's funny is uh, your team developed an app. Yes. So this is your guys' app. You want to tell me a little bit about this and what's unique about this, just for anyone out there. So if you, anyone has questions about minerals, I highly recommend downloading this app. How much does the app cost? Zero. Zero. So as I go through that, as you guys can see, I have all sorts of different tops on here, from intro to minerals, from Dust to Live, podcasts, industry news, right? All sorts of things on here. So where are you getting this information? Uh, from all the resources I use in order to direct the company and, and, the, and the assets that we want to buy. So it's basically everything I can find relative to global energy. Mm -hmm. So I see things on here from 1031 exchanges. So if I do a 1031, can I do a 1031 from selling a property into a mineral exchange? A absolutely. Minerals are treated just like traditional real estate back and forth. So I can use a 1031. I can use personal cash. Uh, I can use my IRA cash. Do I have to be accredited? Yes. With us, you do. Okay. With you. Now, I would argue that it's more important that someone is accredited in these cases because I've seen more things go bad when someone is, no, we don't need accredited investors, right? I think the accreditation is only because you really can't build a mineral portfolio if you only have 25 or 50,000 to invest. It's like trying to build a home with two bricks. You have to have enough bandwidth to create a portfolio. So for us, we've always dealt with accredited investors for the last 37 years. So as I kind of go through this, I'm going to show some stuff. Let me, let me interject this as you're trying to pull this up. I want to, what I wanted to do is that I wanted to make what we do so transparent, it took mineral rights to becoming mainstream. So most investors, and some of you are experiencing this today, you may have a self-storage deal, a multifamily. You have investments that are syndicated, and you're calling now that things aren't going so well. You're not getting answers. You're not getting phone calls. You're not getting emails. Customer service is dropping off, and people are hiding and ducking, right? Nothing makes me more angry. If you want me to drive 200 miles and break your legs, don't tell me what's happening with my money because I'm coming after you, right? So when I started the minerals, I said, the first thing is, what do you want to do in preparing those with self-directed IRAs or traditional investment accounts? How do you want them to be treated? I want them to learn about the cycle. I want to access the data. So we built this site the last two years, spent a lot of money. Now it's like Robin Hood. You can pull up your account, your deeds of ownership, your production, your wells, revenue on every single mineral track you own, percentage of return, and we've only begun. So it's become fully mainstream. We're the only oil and gas company that works with private investors that's built something like this, no one else has anything close to it. So what is the difference between if I say, hey, I want to invest in minerals, because yep. is there a difference between saying that I'm investing in oil and gas versus investing in energy versus investing in minerals? Saying you're going to invest in oil and gas is like saying I'm going to invest in traditional real estate. Like I want to be in residential real estate. That's just an industry. Minerals is one component of it. And minerals starts with, so there's not a single well drilled by Exxon or anybody else in the United States on private property that doesn't start with a lease with a private mineral yeah. owner. We're one of the only countries in the entire world where private ownership occurs in minerals. Every other country, it's owned by the government. So this is one of the only options. We have actually people investing from outside the country in minerals because you can't do it in any other country. That's what's so unique about it. Once again, guys, this is questions for you. So I just asked, okay. So Nicole, you do have questions, I saw. Wait, can you catch? If that's Are you going to be able to catch? Partners tell them I'm not going to answer it. <laughs> I got a lot of jokes right. out there. Let's Let's like... All right, guys. So we have a question. Can you all hear me? All right. So we have a question from our online participants. What is the difference between a mineral interest and a royal, like a gas royalty? Mm, it depends on how they're defining gas royalty. Okay. So if you think about the mineral owner owns 100% of the pie. When they lease that mineral out to the oil company, they're going to retain a certain percentage of that interest, which is royalty, meaning above cost, above liability. Somewhere between the actual owners who drill the well and the mineral owner, sometimes there's a carve out that goes to geologists or the management where they're going to take a percentage of the interest between the actual uh, people who drill the well and the owner. And that's a royalty, meaning I don't own the mineral. I didn't drill the well, but I get some of the income without any exposure to cost. So it's called a, a royalty interest. And that's generally what it is. It's the middleman spread, right? Thanks so much. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So uh, any other questions before I keep going with some of the stuff on the app? I'm about ready to change it up a little bit and kind of surprise you. Just get to the good stuff. We have one more question. <laughs> sure. Um, what shales or plays do you mainly invest in? Um, again, that's like a real estate question. So I liken every industry to being like hiring a fishing guide, right? 
So if I go to a particular lake, Lake Conroe, and I want to learn how to fish or I want to catch some fish that day, I better hire a fishing guy who's been fishing Lake Conroe for 20 or 30 years. He knows the lake. So in this country, we found out about 15 years ago when we had 3.8 million barrels a day in 2008 and we were running out, and that's why oil went to $145 a barrel. Through technology, engineering, and computers, we figured out we really are sitting on these huge buried Grand Canyons. They cover about 30 states. The Marcellus in Pennsylvania, you've got the Bakken in North Dakota, you've got the Eagle for South, you've got the Haynesville. So there's probably 30 different shales of commercial quality, but you really have to decide which shale plays offer you the greatest value for the money invested. We find that our favorite highest return value is in the Anadarko Basin in Oklahoma. We also have a, another team working in the Permian Basin in West Texas. The difference is, let's call the uh, Oklahoma Mineral Basin, let's call that uh, 40 miles outside of Houston, okay? Good price, good value, getting a great bang for our buck, getting a lot of return, a lot of cash. You go to the Permian Basin, it's like trying to buy downtown Houston. You're paying by the square inch, not by the square yard, right? So the permian is loaded with oil and gas, but you have to have a lot more capital to gain the same amount of position. We started in the Anadarko because it is the highest yielding basin that we know of based on the investment dollars and the true rate of return. Perfect. Thanks so much. Do you guys want to see some of the proof that's in the pudding? All right. Uh, I think one of the biggest problems is a lot of times we bring up either a syndicator or something like that, and they can't show you quite everything that goes on behind the scenes. Well, I was very serious when I said that I was very fortunate to get to invest with Troy. Back, uh, I did my first investment with you in November, I think, of 2021. Okay. And so then I really started to receive my what I'd consider my royalties. What? My phone's almost dead. Look at that. During, you better uh, hurry. Yeah, right? <laughs> During 2022. And here's the good part. Dead phone. <laughs> yeah, right? So my wife's going to kill me. This is two of our investments we have with you. So I did this one right here, right? I invested $45,000. Can everyone see that on the screen? Is it, can someone else tell me right there over a one-year time frame, a little over a year, uh, how much income I made on forty-five grand? Anyone just want to shout it out? $20,000. What was that ROI? Huh. Huh. <laughs> Son of a bitch. So now... I will say uh, this was what I would consider to be what I thought was going to be above average, but I was very pleased. So I decided to do a second investment. Now, here's the second one I did from Sunny Home Buyers as well. Anyone we'll see what that ROI is? 25%. Who, who's complaining about that? <laughs> so the only reason I wanted to bring this up is because I think too many times I can't actually show you guys that the proof is there. There's something behind the scenes, right? I will never tell a single person where to invest their money. I will always 100% tell you that you need to do your own due diligence. But if you're going to do due diligence, make sure that you can go ahead and do it on someone where you have a good track record. You can ask multiple investors, right? You can ask other Quest clients. You can meet them at our other events. You can meet them at our master of tax avoidance class that we're having that is coming up right around the corner. So I just kind of want to show that off a little bit. I wanted to show off your app a little bit. It's completely free. If you guys are curious about it, make sure you take a moment just to download it. So I think it's just Eckerd Enterprises in total. And I, I would just wrap up by saying this. So when I started my career at 20 years old in 1985, I mean, that's back when you used to have to hunt down a payphone with a quarter, right? They didn't even have pagers when I started. So I'd go out to rigs, and it was literally like the movie There Will Be Blood. You know, they're slinging iron, and it's drilling like the old days, right? Nowadays, you go to a, a drilling rig that's drilling these fancy horizontal wells. And it's like was, walking onto a NASA space station. They're inside of a rig. They've got artificial hands that are breaking the pipe, all computer screens, plexiglass, sometimes not even people on the rig floor. And these rigs walk like Skywalker. I mean, they'll pick up, and they'll move 50 feet and drill a well. And the reason why it's so important is one of the things you've not seen on any of the public statements of Exxon or most of these majors is they used to tout, we only have a 15% dry hole ratio. We've only lost you know, $30 billion in drilling this year versus what we really spent. You're not seeing oil companies talking about dry holes. They're talking about what's their rate of return, what's their cost of capital, what's their expected value of reserves in the ground. What my belief is, is that the energy market is wide open for private investors because the big guys out of New York that came in with Wall Street money they did not know what they were doing, and they bought billions of dollars of minerals from 2008 to 2018. They had no clue where to buy. 
This is a surgical process. And what gives our company the advantage is that we drilled wells for 30 years. So we've been in Oxy and Exxon's position. That's helped us surgically pick the very best minerals. Now I'm telling you as a conclusion because there's probably 100 million acres in this country covering these shale basins. It's not like we don't have a lot to choose from. You could go spend $100 million in a second. We've surgically selected $350 million worth of minerals that has now given us 28,000 acres and 1,600 plus wells making that kind of return. And that's how you ought to treat your, your IRA, your self-directed IRA. Because I got to tell you, this is not funny, man. I'm going to give you just a little hint before I wrap up. We've seen partners in the last two or three years investing in assets and they treat their self-directed IRA almost like it's uh, gambling money. Oh, I can't get it for 10 years anyway. I, I, I won't mature for 12 years or 13 years. And they carelessly are investing in things that really don't make any numerical sense. They don't have any value. You start saying one plus one does not equal 12. And I see this all the time because what I did for 22 years for my own investment firm, I was the due diligence officer. So I'm really, really good at tearing deals apart. So I thought to myself, well, Troy, if you're going to get people that don't know you, never been in energy, have never put this in portfolio, they got to have the tools to find out, are you really telling the truth? Can they really measure it? Can they really see it? Can it really be empirical data so I can comfortably take the money I worked so hard for that's in my IRA and invest it with your company? So I took the approach is give them what you would want. And I'm super picky, OCD. And that's why I spent probably $2 million on that app. That's why I have a team of 32 people. That's why I buy the minerals before you ever invest. If every client today said, Troy, we're done with minerals, the 20 or $30 million of minerals I have in inventory, I already paid for them. I already own them. So your comfort is I'm one of the only people you're going to find that offers you an investment where I've walked the plane, I'm standing there, and I own it with my own money. Nobody you can invest with that I think of, that I know of, takes the risk before you do. I thank you for your time, and I really appreciate it. I hope you guys have a great week. And again, Derek, thank don't, you for Don't go anywhere. Don't good. go anywhere. You're, you're almost done. I know, I, know, I know you're getting... No, I'm not answering. I just don't want to take up all the time. Yeah. Any questions, guys, real quick? So the question was, how does the tax treatment go on the investments I just showed? So on the first one, the 45000 was through an IRA. So how much am I taxed on that one, Adam? It depends on the character, but I imagine not at all. <laughs> not at all. I love it. Right? It was used through two Roth IRAs that created a trust that pretty much purchased it. So zero taxation. The other one, it's uh, treated for me as an individual because I did use a personal LLC. just taxed as a royalty interest, which is typically going to be a lower bracket. So not as like earned income. So good question. Nicole? We have an, uh, another question from the audience about um, kind of government involvement. Uh, is there kind of anything in process at the moment where the government wants to step in uh, and can prevent these kind of investments or will halt these sort of um, investments or drilling? Um, or they're going to interfere rights, with they're going to interfere with private mineral rights like they did with the Chinese balloon. They're not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Great answer. Thanks, Charles. So, Troy. so one, of the, one of the things I want to point out is, is that if they could have interfered with private ownership of mineral rights, they'd have done it two years ago, five years ago, eight years ago. Under Obama, they tried to cut off the water, which is why the EPA went after all the dry bed creeks. Trump unwound that. What the administration is doing today is they can't affect private mineral rights. What they're doing today is cutting off the capital. They're punishing banks and lenders and private equity and institutions saying, do not give money to fossil fuels. You have to have a carbon offsets, et cetera. So what I said three and a half years ago during COVID is this is going to be the largest derailment of the oil and gas industry I've seen in my career because what they're doing is they're killing the cash. And so because they've killed the cash, that's also why we can't get past 12 million barrels a day. So in my view, we're running at 100% capacity. Every drilling rig, every tank, every catwalk, there is no used equipment. We are drilling as fast as we can. So when Sarah Palin came out last month and said, all they got to do is drill, baby, drill. That's why she's not president. Because right. you can't drill, baby, drill if you've got 700 rigs in inventory and 700 rigs are drilling, unless I get a shovel. So what the consumer needs to know is, is that the price you see in oil and gas has only one direction. That's going up. Saudi came out in December and said, we see 90 as the floor of oil going forward. Okay, they're predicting 102 million barrels of consumption this year. That's 2 million barrels more. Anybody heard of geopolitical risk? 15 years ago, if you farted in the Straits of Hormuz, oil went up $25 a barrel. Now they have a war going over and it's barely moving. I got news for everybody. We are down to about 18 days of oil supply in this country in the Strategic Petroleum Reserves, 18 days. If there's a war that broke out, we have 18 days until we have nothing. 
You know what I want to own? I want to own an asset that 100% of every American uses every single day. Your pen, your paper, this bottle, the plastic, my phone, my clothes, the carpet, it's 100% fossil fuel. There's a video out there that says, what would life look like without fossil fuel? Butt naked on a dirt road using sign language, everything else <laughs> is going to end up being made from fossil fuel. <laughs> Tell me, if the oil gig doesn't work out, I'm going to be a preacher, but it's going to 20% tithing, or I'm going to be a comedian. It's one of those two. <laughs> Edward, <Hey>, Troy. <yes. laughs> Perfect. Wait, hold up. I'm a new Edward partner, and I don't know jack about oil and gas. Um, <laughs> Thanks for that comfort of education we gave you before you go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know jack. But, but uh, along those lines, as far as government, uh, yeah. all my friends that uh, I try to introduce to Eckert, one of the questions they have is, what about fracking? Can you elaborate on that? Whether, you know, uh, in the past, it's been the bad stuff. They've been showing some bad stuff on it. And is the future of fracking, and it's not going to stop, is it? Or what's the deal yeah, on So that? let's let's talk about the, the misnomer. Yeah, so, so let me just tell you what fracking's like, okay? So the shale formation in the ground, it's like having a nice concrete driveway in Houston in July, and there's no water on it. It's concrete. It's super, super hard. It was compressed because the erosion off the mountains at the time took all the organic material and the rock and pushed it down to the valley, and then it was compressed because of two miles of earth on top of it, and then it was cooked by the magma. Okay, the magma, right? So what happens is in that driveway example, you now go out on July 4th and you wet your driveway. That's the only gas that's in that concrete but you can't go out and drink water because you'd rub your tongue raw trying to get it out. So what they decided is instead of going down vertically, let's go sideways. So let's use this long desk right here. If I had one chair and I drilled a vertical well, I can only get so much water from that concrete based on what seeps into that hole. But if I go down and I go sideways for two miles with a seven and a half inch hole, I now expose myself to two miles. So drive down the highway two miles and every one of those yellow little stripes in the middle of the road, now that becomes the second part of success. So one, we learned how to drill, go sideways two miles. Now we have exposure. One vertical well versus horizontal, it's like 400 wells worth of exposure versus the old vertical well. First, first chore accomplished, more oil and gas. Second chore was, how do we get it out? So what they decided is, well, how would you break up concrete to create a lower pressure point so that water migrates to the point of least resistance? We drilled the well, that's the point of least resistance, but now we got to frack it. So they go in and they overpressure and they shatter the rock like a jackhammer, but they decided well, it's not gonna it's not gonna stay open because you got two miles of earth sitting on top, it's gonna close. Those fractures are gonna seal again. Well, let's jam some beach sand right in between those fractures and it won't seal, it'll stay open. It's called a propping. So all it was is water and lubricant so it didn't have friction and they jammed sand in the ground and all of a sudden uh, Matt Damon comes out with a movie and says, oh, you're polluting the world, okay? Let me tell you how ridiculous all of Hollywood is. They're below the octopus. It's pressure. Yes. Anybody here a scuba diver? It's real simple. When you start at the surface, you're at surface pressure. You get down each time you go down further, it's different pressure. When we get down to two miles, we're at 3,000 pounds per square inch. We set 12-inch casing down below the aquifer and cement. Then they pressure tested to 30, 40,000 pounds of PSI and says, there's no way there can be any leak whatsoever. So all this nonsense from Hollywood about Oil seeping up and affecting the aquifer, total BS. Fracking. Can you cause an earthquake with fracking? Well, yes, you can. And why, why does it happen? If you frack along a fault, that fault goes down maybe one, two, three miles in the ground. Exactly why we have earthquakes. Exactly why we have volcanoes. There are fractures in the system. So are we causing it? Well, let's think logically. We're pulling out uh, 12 million barrels a day. Is the earth sinking? Okay, Houston's sitting on major oil fields. If we just pulled out 100 million barrels the last 40 years, anybody notice Houston sinking? It's geophysically impossible what they're trying to describe. They're saying you're causing a frack by injecting uh, 20 million pounds of sand, but you're going to pull out 40 million pounds of oil in the next week and a half. I have not fallen into an oil crevice yet. It's totally illogical, okay? So what the sand did and where they got so good at this is they started using this fancy sand from Wisconsin because it wasn't geometrically round. So if you think about an egg, you say, well, I can't crack an egg if I go long side, right? Most of us are not strong enough to do that. But if I go sideways this way, I can smash it. They figured out that the original sand, that if they bought sand in Wisconsin, it had a little bit of geometrical corners to it, like almost like a diamond. So let's get it in from Wisconsin, ship it down the Mississippi River, put it in the intercoastal, and then let's haul it to West Texas for $75 a ton became too expensive. And I got to tell this joke because it's funny, right? So, 
So Stage this is, is what they were doing, and the wells were costing more and more because they realized, well, we got this well, but we can't put in one or two million pounds of sand because we're not getting out as far. We're not getting as much sand out in the formation. What was happening? What happens to sand when you turn up the heat? Turns to glass. What happens to glass when you put two miles of earth on it? It shatters. Their open fractures did like this within six months, so the decline curves were straight off the cliff. And they're like, ooh, we got to solve a problem. So I'm telling you, in 2015, this is my joke, some redneck engineer was sitting out in West Texas going, boss, oil price have plummeted, Saudi's flooding the market. We can't pay the sand guys. They're not going to give us any more sand. The bank's going to take us over. We got to turn some wells on so we get some revenue and prove to the bank we have some reserves. We have no money. You know, my cousin Louie's got a sand trap down here, a little sand gravel pit down the road. He's got pretty clean sand. If we shake it and bake it and clean it out and get all the frogs and mosquitoes out of it, we got a lot of sand there, and it's cheap. It's like $10 a ton. What do you suggest? Well, instead of putting in 2 million pounds of sand, let's buy all his sand. Let's put in 10 or 15 million pounds of sand, and let's really wedge that sand and get it so packed in there those fractures won't seal. It's called interbasin sand, meaning where they drill gets sand locally. So that's what they did. And all of a sudden, Johnny's a genius because Sonic, Johnny goes out and dumps in 10 million pounds of sand. Now that fracture didn't seal. And that well that came on with the old 2 million, barrel, 2 million pounds of sand, they came on 300 barrels a day. The new one came on at 1,000 barrels a day. And after a year, it was still doing 300 barrels a day. And they go, bingo, we figured it out. We're not buying sand in Wisconsin. We're buying it right here in the basin. Now they're doing it with 28 million pounds of sand per well, not 2 million. And now these wells are coming in. Some of the best wells I've seen in my career, I'm talking wells that are producing 100,000 barrels, 50,000 barrels a month. They're producing in two or three months. What did you take five to 10 years to produce? Guess who the winner is? Chicken dinner mineral owners, right? You, you have minerals that were developed five years ago with the old news. The wells didn't produce that good. I call a mineral owner and go, hey, you had minerals back uh, in 2009 when they drilled that first horizontal well. Your check dropped off like a rock. Yeah, I don't think they're ever going to come back and drill again. Yeah, I, I agree. What you ought to do is let me buy it from you for $7,000 an acre. That sounds good. That's like 15 years cash flow. Yeah, I agree. What they don't know is that the rig's moving right down the line. That well's going to be drilled in four or five months with four brand new wells. They're going to make as much production from one well as five other wells made five years ago. It's insane. And the wells are off the chart. I'm not just imagining. We had a working interest participation last year where our clients wanted to drill the well for tax write-offs. They gave us the check January of 2022 to get tax write-offs last year. The company drilled the wells. We had five months of production. Their first check out in November was an 89% return. For the first time in my career, I had clients calling me back, yelling at me, going, you gave my money back in the same tax year. I didn't get the tax deduction. I said, I'll drill your dry hole next time. I guarantee you lost. <laughs> You're yelling at me for returning 89% of your money back? Well, you could have waited a month. I go, no, I couldn't. Then you think I'm stealing your money. I said, you're complaining. Uh, now we have clients saying, we got $30 million worth of drilling. I said, I figured you'd come around to my way of thinking. It's just you're creating more value. I've got to tell you, folks, oil and gas is risky. I'm going to tell you right now, I can't hardly think of another company. I'm not just being an arrogant SOB. I don't know of anybody that's not out there ripping your money off in oil and gas. I can tell you, if you gave me the name of 10 companies and I sat down with their pack, I'm going to tell you how they're skinning your life. I'm going to tell you how they're ripping you off. I'm going to tell you how they're selling illegal securities, how they have past cease and desist, how they have losses and how they hide it by being super fancy and talking the fast talk. I'm a redneck from Laferia, Texas. I grew up six miles off the Mexican border. My parents were dirt poor. I am that kid that walked the gravel road because my mom always forgot I was in the back of the truck in the camper. She passed right by my school and I'd be beating on the door. I'd have to walk back to school further than my house was to the house. Okay. I grew up poor, but it was the best thing that could have happened to me. Why? I became very industrial. At 10 years old, I was the guy selling eggs from our chickens up and down the block and mowing grass. As my friends will tell you, I had more cash in my pocket at 10 than most parents did at the age of 40 because I was a hustler when I was a kid. But let me tell you what made the difference in my career. My One of my original clients was the CFO of Pace Picani Sauce. When Pace Picani Sauce became a privately owned company and was going to sell the Campbell Soup for $1.2 billion, my client was the CFO. Big guy. I mean, six foot four, big kind of hoss. I come down to sell him down in San Antonio, and he looks at me and says, Troy, I'm not putting another dime into you put your own money. And I go, I'm just like a 23-year-old kid. I don't have much money. He goes, I'll do 50000 How much can you put in? I said, I can do $12,500. i will take a quarter of a position if you take two positions. You start doing a quarter position, I'll do 50000 every well. But you've got to know what I go through if you're going to get my money. I need to know you're at risk like I am. So starting at 23, I started buying into wells. We had 44 in a row. Before I was done, I had... 43 out of 44 wells, I was making 25 to 50,000 a month off my wells. And that started my career back when I was just a kid. Then I started my own investment company, started my own oil company in 1995. 
I will tell you, in Houston, there's a company called Connecticut Partners. I started it in 2009. My clients are a billionaire here in Texas. I started it. We bought it from El Paso Natural Gas. We didn't pay that much for it. We made about five times revenue back what we paid for it. We made almost one and a half times our money back in less than 18 months in the first year of owning it. You say, well, well you're, you should be retired. You're a stud. I will never retire. I will be on the beach doing a deal, taking my last breath between oxygen tanks. That's the way it's going to be. Okay? I have clients that are 90, 95 years no one old retires still anymore. doing deals because they're like, oh, you don't need any more money because it's been, not been about, about money for years. And the reason why I get such a great pleasure out of this, and I got to tell you, I travel around the country a lot. And I'm watching a lot of you losing money right now. You bought into those deals that were based on low interest rates. They're based on buying, flip, and refinance. The carnage is coming, and it's going to be bloody. But my clients right now are super happy because they've got minerals with our company. We send your checks out in green envelopes every month. That's why I use the little green hat. My clients know those green envelopes. Derek took me back in the back and said, hey, staff, this is the guy that sends all those green envelopes to our company, right? They don't like them. Yeah, because yeah, there's lots of them. Right? Yeah, we literally give like a whole box of them that they have to process on a consistent basis. It's funny. I like that message because I want you to know at your age and where you're going in passive income, you don't need bills. You don't need bad news. You don't need headaches. This is about accretive addition to your portfolio through passive income that has no exposure and liability or cost. That was in about three minutes with one breath. Go for it. <laughs> so uh, I work with three really close people uh, with almost all of my investments. One of them is Paul Lomatos, the guy that you know does represent Blink Lending. I was very serious where I say I've bought notes from him. I've borrowed money from him as well. Uh, the other person's right over there, Steve Eagle. Steve, say hi to everybody. If it wasn't for Steve, I never would have been able to become a, a, a accredited investor. Right? He has probably talked me out of more deals right? <laughs> because I'm very ambitious than anything else. But in addition, uh, so he does run the Wealth Club, and he's helped me find other investments. And the third person, Troy, is actually yourself. Appreciate that. I'm glad so uh, with that being said, Carmel, can you come up real quick? So Carmel here uh, works with you. Yep, my assistant. So uh, who would like Troy's information so Carmel can go around? Carmel, say hi. Hi. How are y'all doing? <laughs> So that way he she can go around, pass out his information, that type of stuff. Because we do have to get uh, closing this up here any minute, guys. Troy, it's about 7.50. I know you got to get going about 8. So any last and... minute questions real quick before we kind of close things down? Yes. Does this work like investing in a fund or is it? Direct ownership. Does it work like investing in the fund was the question for the people online. So what we do is we'll buy mineral positions, 5 acres, 10 acres from different producing units with different oil companies. We put it into a mini portfolio, but it's not a not an entity. So let's say it's a million dollar portfolio. You put in a hundred thousand. You own ten percent of each acreage of position, but it's deeded and titled with an exhibit in your name. It's your asset. You own it, like buying real estate. I don't like partnerships. I don't like syndications. I don't like back ends and fees because to me a lot of that's covered up, and that's just one more layer of fat that keeps me from getting wealthy. I want you to own it directly. I was gonna say so. I uh, if you look up here in just a second. Mm, it actually shows you the individual acres that I own, which is, I think, very, very unique uh, under the certificates button. Nope, mineral buttons, one of these, mineral deeds. So I actually own each one of these individual mineral deeds, which is actually really cool. We so. give you the actual file key so you know you own it in the courthouse. Yeah. Real quick there in the back. Yeah, two questions. One is, uh, is there any tax? I asked a tax question before, but is there any tax depreciation that happens? 15% of your income is not taxed, but if you do it yourself, direct or IRA, it doesn't matter. That's but as an individual outside of your self direct IRA, you only pay tax on 85% of your income because of depl uh, depletion allowance. And then uh, how, what is the minimum investment? A uh, million dollars per person. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I was going to drop We start that. most portfolio. Here, here's what I'm going to give you the answer, right? It's like being a small person. I'm going to say this politically correct. Like being a small person, you show up to Six Flags and say, What's the minimum to get on the ride? Okay, it's 42 inches, but if you stand on your tiptoes, I'll let you in. We're looking for partners that can invest $100,000 to $200,000 because we want you to put money in four or five portfolios, which allows us to balance what you're going to do. If you're going to show up with $25,000, I suggest you buy public stock and, and mineral companies because that's really better, probably better suited for you. And the reason I say that is this is something that most investors don't understand. Energy should be part of your cornerstone of your portfolio to some degree. When oil goes up, stocks go down. When oil goes up, other things like lending and cost of capital goes up. So what you've got to remember is if you don't have a counterbalance that seesaw, you got a problem in your portfolio. We like to work with clients who see it as something that's not pocket change or let me throw a couple of dollars on the table. So out of all of our partners, we have over a thousand clients we have. We're talking about money allocation more than minimum. So the minimum is 25,000. 
we probably wouldn't want to open an account for twenty-five thousand. We tell you, let's talk about you when you want to really take some serious look at this kind of a project. Okay. And the million dollars is good if you want to do that. Last question right here, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, and then we're going to do a quick close. Thank you for being here. Uh, Two-part question. That ownership uh, scenario you described, are the owners limited partners? No, ma'am. You're a direct owner. So okay. it's a, it's a non-tied-together entity. In other words, you okay. and 10 people own the million. We report it. We manage it. We send your check. You all get individual checks. There's no joint venture or partnership agreement whatsoever. Okay. Part two. How do you make money off that scenario? I buy it for a dollar and I sell it for $1.35, dollar thirty-five, roughly. Okay. So, so what I do is you're my bank. I go out to the market and these guys are selling minerals and I say, well, I need to cover my cost. Let's say I make 35% profit. The third's going to go to taxes. Third's going to cover my overhead. I'm going to make a third profit. That's the way life is. Okay. What we do though is that we look at the financial numbers and our job is to get that seller to sell it to us for 35% or less and is it than what we buy for in the marketplace. And because of our aggregation of capital, crush it because there's not very many cash buyers in the market. We're the number one cash buyer in Oklahoma. Everybody else has to use leverage and borrowed money. That bank's not going to lend the money at 9% like they are today. So we're still just crushing it, buying it so much below for our market value. Prior to investment, is there an educational or introduction component to this? Yes, sir. If you'll sign up to the app, tell us you're accredited. I'm known for doing videos. My clients sometimes block me for a month at a time because you have more training videos than you'll ever want. And after a while, you're like, I don't want to hear his voice ever again. Right? I had laryngitis last year. I heard this roar of cheer all over the country. He can't talk. <laughs> I like to educate because then two things happen. Seriously, you can never claim you didn't know and try to sue me because you're going to say, I didn't know that. And, sir, if you don't know what's going on with oil and gas by the time you watch my videos, I can't help you. The second thing is the smarter I make you, the less chance you're going to invest with these other oil and gas people who are really out to bamboozle you. So I want you to be the smartest oil investors in the market. You're going to come to one conclusion. Get the green hat, get the green envelope. That's the way it works. Last question right here. Good evening, everybody. I'm Maria with Air Management. So I'm a real estate agent, and we buy property that we resell um, and we flip. So if I receive a property that has mineral rights, uh -huh. there's an addendum where the owner specifically says that he's keeping them. Okay. But when they don't have that addendum, then it's understood that we're buying them. It's transferred, yeah. Correct? Yeah. So um, if I get word that um, a certain area has mineral rights, and uh, is it possible to buy the mineral rights instead of the houses? Oh, absolutely. We don't ever buy the surface. We don't. We own 28,000 acres of minerals. We can't even get on the land because it's trespassing. We only own what's under the ground. We don't own anything on top. Okay, so how do we research or where do we research? I'm sorry, that's proprietary data. I can't help you. <laughs> okay. Look, okay, because I'll be honest with you. You can go to a truck stop in Oklahoma, go to the bathroom, and on the board says minerals for sale for 100 bucks. It's not every... This building, somebody owns the mineral rights under this building. But there may not be any oil and gas, or it can't be severed. Or you can't find a place to let, make a So rig. where do you know? Where do you find out? How do you research? I think that comes from your geologists and stuff that you no, have, like it, George. It comes, from, no? it comes from 37 years of being in the business. It's like it's like going to that fishing on that lake, and I look at the guide, and he takes off in the wrong direction. I'm thinking it's this way. And he goes in this nasty cove, and it's got branches. like, where is it? He's going to kill me or what? And I go, what are you doing? He goes, just sit back and relax. I've been doing this for 30 years. He takes you over. You throw your line underneath there, and you pull out a four-pound bass. Why? I've been doing this since 1985. I tell most people my underwear are older than most of my clients these days, okay? I went to my, so by, by the way, so you know, I, I'm one of the only people you'll meet that has a product that invites every client every year to an all partners conference, which we're gonna have this May in San Antonio. I invite them rich, tall, small, why? You're either gonna find out I'm a liar and beat me like a pinata on Sunday, or you're gonna be my partner for life. So far, I haven't been swinging from a tree yet. So the answer is, I'm gonna help you learn but I'm not going to tell you Coca-Cola's recipe. I'm not going to tell you how to go compete. Is that fair? That's fair. Okay. But so, you can buy minerals anywhere you want. So, guys, real quick on that, the this class, uh, Troy is going to be one of our main speakers, all right? In addition, we're going to bring in a couple other people just to help with that. Hey, Adam, look. Your face is right there on the back. I got a better headshot than that. <laughs> <laughs> so... I would love it if you guys wanted to sign up for that class to get more information from Troy. If you want to get his information, please see Carmel there in the back. Uh, I do know you have to get going to the airport here in a minute, but was this helpful, guys? Absolutely. Everyone give him a big round of applause.
For those of you out there online, make sure you do sign up for the Master Tax Avoidance Boot Camp. If you are a client, you get a specialized discount. All you got to do is email marketing at questtrust.com. If you're a client, if you're not a client, let me know. We'll absolutely still get you a ticket. You know, I think they're 125 bucks is what it comes out to be. So promise you it's well worth it. And thanks everyone. And we'll see you around. Nicole, you can go ahead and just end the broadcast there in the back whenever you're ready. And bubble be tuna.